I'm fourth generation from this area, so I've been around here for a long time. Grew up at the beach. Uh, with my father being in marine science, he taught coastal ecology and ichthyology and ornithology. These are all the ologies that are centered around the coast that talk about the birds that live here, the fish that are living in the water. My name is Jace Tunnel, and I'm Director of Community Engagement at the Heart Research Institute for Gulf of Mexico Studies at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. In Port Aransas, kind of the interesting thing about it is that you have these community members that have lived here for a really long time and that really know the area. You can go out with some of these fishing guides and they could tell you, uh, I think, a lot more than what the scientists could tell you because they're out there every day. They can say, oh, the temperature's this, oh, the tides are this, you know, this is where we ought to go fishing. Uh, this is the species we're gonna catch this time of year because the temperature is, is this. You know, they really know what they're doing out there. And those are kind of those iconic, salty folks. That's what I think of when I think of Port Aransas is the tradition of fishing. It's always been known, even in the 1800s, it was the place to go. And they have kept with that, even today. It's known all around uh, the country. The Gulf of Mexico is so mysterious. You know, so there's certain times of the year where some of these things are washing in, and we know people are gonna start asking us questions. And so we started beachcombing back when COVID hit. You know, COVID kind of threw everybody for a loop. And so we came up with this idea of doing a video every day that we would put out on social media. And I said, I'll do, you know, stuff washing up at the beach because I already been going out there once a week looking for stranded sea turtles, marine mammals, counting endangered species, birds, things like that. So I said, I'll just take some video when I'm out there. You know, we'll talk about like if we find a safe on the beach, we're going to be opening that up and like get the curiosity of people that maybe they're not too interested in the science that's going on in the Gulf of Mexico, but they want to know what's in that safe. We're really trying to reach people that we wouldn't normally reach in the science community. And if there's school teachers that are using this in their classrooms as an initiator to talk about uh, science and, and things in the Gulf of Mexico, that, that's even better. I would show Jace's videos in the classroom and the kids would get so excited and then before you knew it we were already integrating reading or we're integrating math and science and so it was like this whole other piece to their learning that we added just by the things that he had to offer in those little short clips in the videos. So you know we came up with these beachcombing episodes to really uh, inspire that next generation of like, hey, you know, this is the science they're doing it, and this is the way that they're relating it. It's like, maybe I wanna get into science. You can see the passion that Jace has for what he does in every video you watch. He is excited, he is motivated, he is encouraged, and so the kids take onto that. They feel that, they sense that, even watching it through a video clip that he's put out there for them to see. While working with students, I'm hearing young girls say, oh, Miss Martinez, I am so excited to go into the science field. I didn't really think women could do this. I didn't think this was something girls really could get into. That impact is pretty huge. Our ultimate goal is, you know, to get people interested in what's washing up, uh, get them interested in what's in the Gulf of Mexico, because if they're interested, they could start caring. And if they care, that leads to conservation.